Hi and welcome back. So in today's video, I just want to share with you a bit of the work that I'm currently doing. So it has been a while that I did not upload any content. So a lot of people contacted me saying that, are you still alive, boy? I said, yes, <laughs> how am I? Um, so yeah, so actually I'm working on a course that will be um, PrestaShop and Noxt together. So the question, how is that possible? Well, finally, it's possible to have a PrestaShop REST API and big shout out to Sunberry who developed a plugin or module, a PrestaShop module that allow you to expose APIs through your backend application. And yeah, so it's really amazing. And I do invite you to check that out. Uh, maybe I'll be leaving the link in the description of this video. Uh, and it will be having also Nux. So Nux will be the application that will consume this REST API. So now go back to the context of this video. Uh, let me reduce all this image. Uh, not this one, boom, there you go. I think like this is more easy to see. Yep, so this is the current state. I'm still working. So the course is being recorded right now. And here I have a little side panel, if you can call that, with a drop down. And this drop down contains two entries, English and French. And this data is get it, is, is get it, wow. It is, um, is uh, what is the word? It's sourced from the PrestaShop REST API. We have the two languages, English and French, with all ISA code and all the funny stuff. So I'm be uploading content on this topic, on this channel soon so stay around okay so here i'm just displaying the language whether french or english uh, if it's selected or not so my idea here i would like to persist the user selection so if he selected english then i need to persist that selection to uh to the store and somewhere in the browser that when he go back later he will see the website on the pre-selected language okay so I'm using Pina here as a state management tool. So it's similar to Vuex, to Redux, to Saga, etc. So it simply allow you to manipulate the piece, um, the state of your applications. And Pina actually uh, does not have by default a tool to persist data to the local storage, for example. So for sure, some people out there try to develop tools, plugins that will do such things, but unfortunately, uh, there is, uh, they're still missing some pieces. For example, this plugin persists data or state or persists state and use local storage here uh, from view use. They require you to disable SSR in order to work because they are using local storage and local storage simply does not exist on the server side. So yeah. And here, if uh, we really disable SSR for an e-commerce app, well, the loss is much bigger than the gain. So this is why I decided to create my own. And by the way, on the documentation page, you find a little page on the official page, you find the documentation page about plugins that pretty much explain all what you need to create your own plugin. Okay, so let's go back to the code. Show me the code like what they say. So here I have a little file for the plugins, a little directory inside, a uh, little file inside the plugins directory called Pina Persist. Again, it's up to you to call it whatever you want. And the good thing about Next that Nux 3, that it does load automatically all the file inside the layout, inside the plugins, uh, inside the middleware. So everything is really auto imported, which is really amazing. So let's drive inside the code here. So I'm defining a Nux plugin. I'm destructuring the context. So the context by default is get injected into any plugin. And this context is like a big box of uh, instances of such like uh, Pina, I don't know, like a uh, router, etc. etc. So here I'm destructuring it. I'm getting only Pina and I'm setting Pina to use this little method. So use here is very similar to express.use or node.use. Yep. So the same idea here. So we are injecting this little function called secret Pina plugin and it take a context as a parameter that is of type Pina plugin context and the mission starts. So let me collapse this. Here, first of all, I would like to execute this secret Pina plugin only when the user interface piece of state is manipulated. So what is happening behind the curtain? Next, we'll load the plugin, then he will find out, execute what's inside the plugin. And in when it does execute that, then it will be Pina here executed, Pina.use. So Pina will take the hand 
at this point and it will loop through all the piece of state and execute this plugin using this data okay so you get the point hopefully so when this define pina plugin is executed i would like to execute okay a lot of execution here it's a little bit confusing so i want to execute this code only when we are looking at this user interface piece of state i don't want to use that code when page is loaded but instead it must be user interface hopefully that is clear okay so when this condition is true i would like to start by reading the local storage so here we have another if statement if process uh, if negation of process.server then uh, do a local storage get item default language and store it inside this const and update default language that is simply this little piece of state okay so the question here again why process.server well simply because it's local storage and local storage does not exist on the server side so yeah very classic okay once that done we have another block of code that will be executed but this time we don't really care if it's front or back generally we executed front because here we're watching the changes on the store so every time the user alter the store will be subscribing so subscribing is very simple it will be like watcher to changes on the store and there is a callback that will be executed with any change and this little command saying that set up a callback to be called whenever the state changes okay so this is our callback here we're passing an event that is of type subscription callback mutation and take state as a type so if again we are testing if the piece of state the atomic piece of state that has been changed here is default language is this little one I would like to update the local storage item default language with the new value okay so it's very simple very straightforward and let's go ahead and have a little demo so currently let's see let me whip everything and reload the page so at this point we will get some default data now it's null it's even null it's okay no worries uh, despite that we have a language but this piece of ui is not updated yet to update the store so more work is going to be done so let's go back and um, change this to english for example so once that change to english the store get updated we have default language set it to one and next let's go back to the application so we have default language set it to one all right now if i play around with this let's say i'm going to set this to mohammed as a string of characters now if i go back to the view nothing has been changed because right now it's one direction update so when uh local storage get updated it does not really reflect itself to the store okay so now if i do a flash page look what will happen default language get the value that has been stored inside the local storage so that is the goal it's working as expected well the missing part is that we need to update this okay Thank you for watching hopefully that was well, that was enjoyable and that will be uh helpful to somebody out there who's stuck with pina persistence uh thank you for watching once again and uh, about the course i'll be uploading content regularly hopefully about this course i'll be uploading more content about the rest api of prestashop uh, and next uh yeah i think that's it for this video thank you for watching and see you another one i need just to without looking boom